This time on Pedalbox, we're working through yet more of our 10% list, and one of the main things we're doing is a really big quality of life feature. We're putting in some Dynamat. There's two very fair questions that you might be asking about this. Why are we putting Dynama in at all? And given that, why are we putting it in so early? Now, the reason we're putting it in at all is because this is a big, basically single piece of metal shell. Everything's fully welded, and it means that any little impact rings through the body really, really loudly. And we suspect that when, we come, when it comes time to actually drive this thing anywhere, it'll be horrible. We don't really want to do that. There's no point in having a fast car if you're not willing to actually take it anywhere and use it. So we're going to put a bunch of dynamite in, make sure it's nice and comfortable and a little bit of heat insulation as well, so that when we want to take it places, it's a bit more enjoyable. As for why we're doing some of it now, because we're still fabricating, and once you've got this stuff on, you're not welding anywhere near it. Uh, you can't take it off to weld, it sticks I'll say it sticks pretty well, and um, obviously being as it's like an adhesive rubber, you definitely can't let the heat from welding get near it, so we've got to be quite careful with where we put it in. But we're breaking it up in stages, you know, installing some now and some later, because honestly, having done this in the Rover, it is brutal, miserable work. Um, the amount of suffering that I went through putting this stuff in the SD1 has put me off working on it so badly that I haven't even touched that car in over a month now. So getting it done in a few smaller, more manageable pieces is a really important step to make sure we don't get too sick of working on it. Now there is a second half of why we're doing it now, and that's while we're working on the thing, we're still reshaping some of the body metal and everything, you know, knocking some panels into, into shape and everything. And as we do that, honestly, it's really, really loud. It's not very nice to work on right now. So if we can take out some of that resonance in the body, it'd be a lot nicer for us to work on. And as well as that, it's just kind of polite to our neighbors as well, because they put up with quite a lot of noise from us. So if we can take the edge off it for them, that just seems kind of polite. I've already done most of the really awkward bits. I've got dynamite all up on the firewall here. This is one piece all the way around behind the cage and in a few other places that were quite tricky to get to. But one of the ones that we can film and show you quite easily is these two triangles in the passenger cell here. So we've got one on the other side as well. And um, I cut this piece of mat to shape yesterday. I didn't quite get it done. It still needs a little bit more trimming off the edges. And the tool that we use to cut it, knives are useless. Don't bother with a knife as are thin scissors with little narrow blades. What happens, the blades just bend around the, uh, the mat and don't really cut it very well. But if you've got a slightly more stout pair of scissors, you don't need anything crazy like tin shears or anything, but just a decent pair of kitchen scissors will go through it like butter. So we're just gonna get this in place, figure out roughly how much more I need to take off the edges and uh, we'll hopefully get that in quite quickly. So I put this in place, I folded the edge up where I had excess and I'm just gonna draw a line down from there to the opposite corner, we should get a nice straight edge. And when you buy your Dynamat, it's gonna come folded in three like this. And on the fold lines, it gets quite wrinkly, not very good. Now, in fairness, it probably doesn't affect the product at all, but in the manual, it does say that any air pockets affect its ability to stick, which is why you get like a roller and really squeeze it onto the thing. So I'm just gonna try and squeeze out a little bit of the wrinkles from behind and hopefully give us a slightly flatter surface for it to stick to the body with. It, again, probably doesn't matter, but I'm playing it safe. Now the last thing I'm gonna do before putting this on is get a bit of brake clean on the panel and just wipe off any kind of debris of um, oils or anything else I might have got on there. The book does say that it sticks to oily surfaces, but I don't think I really trust that, especially considering it says explicitly to use a residue free solvent to wipe the surface off. So I think they might be telling a few porkies there, but nonetheless, I have to say it does stick pretty well. And obviously that's about as easy as it gets. It's a nice single shape flat panel that there's really no curves in or anything complex to deal with. Everything else on the car so far has been a lot trickier. Even this, the firewall, which is, looks like one big piece of metal, of course it's behind the roll cage, which makes it a bit tricky. And everything that I did up in the E-pillars is a fun one. Apparently the rearmost pillar in your car, if I remember right, is supposed to be your E-pillar, even if you're missing other pillars in between. Um, but what I did inside the E-pillars is even more horrible. 
Now the trick for these, and I suspect this is going to come in useful on most people doing a kind of dynamite install, even if they're not in like a tube frame race car, is I peeled the uh, peeled the backing back uh, back part way, slotted the whole thing down very very carefully behind, and then kind of peeled the backing the rest of the way up from behind. It was a little bit tricky because it's kind of like you know where can you peel the backing from and get it somewhere reachable. And here I had to peel it up from this corner, and I had like a little tiny triangle of it up here that I was able to carry on pulling it from. But it did work out pretty well. And in the E pillar is I don't even want to talk about what was involved in that. Um, so we're going to move on to some other tricky bits now. There's very little like this that we can film for you. The next thing we're doing is underneath the front wings. Now before we can do this, we've got to tap out a few more dents and kind of shape it properly. But the next up is putting Dynamat under here. Now obviously we're not going to be able to get a camera in there for you, so uh, we'll just get back to you in a second. So now that we've got a layer of Dynamat on the top side and outside of this quarter panel, we're going to throw a little lav mic inside it and give it a couple of taps of the hammer and compare it to the other side, which we haven't treated yet, to give you an idea of how many decibels of sound that knocks out of it. It's not a very scientific test, it's the wrong frequency spectrums, all sorts of other stuff, so nerds don't at us. But it should give you some idea of how good this stuff is. So we've just reviewed the footage real quick and it looks like we've saved about 6 to 12 dB depending on kind of where you hit the thing over the other side which is untreated. So it's a pretty big improvement in transmission there. Again, as I said, not like super scientific. Obviously our heads are up there in the car so it's all a bit different. Uh, but I hope you'll have heard how different the timbre of and it's a lot lower and a lot nicer sound to be hearing. So hopefully when we're working on the thing, driving it around, everything will be that much nicer. So this episode and the last, we've been going through getting rid of a few things off this 10% list. And honestly, the Dynamat was not on that list because it wasn't 90% complete. It was 0% complete. But that is an important quality of life improvement so that we can get things on and finish off some of the bodywork on the inside. And obviously you can see over here, we've got quite a bit of Bondo going on over the outside. And it looks really bad, this whole thing being covered, but there's lots and lots of little hammer knocks and things. So most of this is gonna be coming off again. But Whilst it's drying, or at least the stuff up here is drying, this is nearly done at this point, um, I'm going to install a couple of little trays for the intercooler. And refitting the intercoolers is on the bottom of this list. Now, the job of these is to direct the water from this flow underneath the intercooler and then dump it down into the very back bit of the floor rather than the front, the, or not the front section, but the next section further forward. I don't want water sloshing around up front if I can avoid it, particularly not on a very big panel because this one goes from edge to edge on the car. And if that rots, if it swells, if it warps or anything like that, it's going to be really difficult to replace. Whereas the panel back here is only about 10 or 12 inches by about 15 inches across uh, from edge to the, the inside of the cockpit. So that's a much easier piece. We drill a couple of holes through and when we accelerate, the water will run back, dump out of the holes, all great. Hopefully there'll be no water going in, it'll be stopped by the intercooler and it'll fall down, but the chances of nothing getting through is slim to none. And I'm hoping this little small return is going to be enough to stop whatever water does hit the intercooler, drop down and then flow through from getting into this forward section of floor. Well, that's this side cut down. It needed a little bit more modification doing to it because it was patterned off the piece for that side of the car on the passenger side, and that one has pipes in a different place. This has the fuel lines which run across the bottom of the car, whereas the coolant lines for the um, heater system are vertically on the side of the car. So these ones had to be cut down a little bit more on this side to fit because that one was test fit and this one wasn't before we just went ahead and tried to do it. So uh, that's some solid work and designing once again on this project. Now the problem is I'm also not going to be able to pop rivet that in, so a good chunk of what I wanted to achieve with this can't be done today, and that's because I've run out of pop rivets. So temporarily I've cheated and just run a little 4mm bolt through to hold it in place for the time being. But that also means the one on the other side isn't going to get fit. So they're both going to wait for the time being, and we're not going to be able to cross any part of that off the list. 
We do have something else that we can cross off though, which is down at the front of the car. So yeah, something we can actually cross off at the front of the car is the wiring, or at least the routing of it, because we've had this massive bundle of cables knocking around in this little well down here for absolutely ages, and we've been avoiding and avoiding and avoiding doing anything with it. And finally, I decided I was gonna route all of the wiring to the headlights and unbundle all of this so we know where it is. So everything down here, all of this, this is fan control and fan power. Now we're gonna be trying to bypass this big block here because these apparently regularly fail, so we want rid of that. And all of this bundle is for the washer fluid pump down here, heated washer jets up here, although I think we've actually stripped out the heated washer jet element of it, so we might be uh, just removing that. And uh, there was something else on this run, what is it? Fuel pump, I think this one is the fuel pump and this is all just running down here. So this can just sit where it is. Now the headlights, we've run one set down this side along here and that will go around through under the arch under here and this goes into the back of the headlight on this side and the other one is the indicator bulb which okay that's not the indicator bulb that is the horn and this is the indicator bulb now i haven't worked out what i'm going to do for the side repeaters whether or not i'm going to try and mount something into the wing mirror like we would on most more modern cars or whether we're going to end up putting something in this panel on the side which is just behind the wheel which has nothing on it so it'd be interesting to see what your opinions are pop one in the comments about whether or not we should put something or try and put something underneath the wing mirror or put something in this little panel that we haven't fully worked out yet now to the other side all of this wiring runs across the back of the um, uh, bonnet vent over here you can see here is the bundle for the other side and again that just goes to the lights and the indicator on the other side so we still have to run those through but the lights themselves the plugs they're all already spliced on so the wiring for the headlights is done and that at least means that the routing portion of this wiring loom at the front is done even if the final wire up into the fans and the washer bottle isn't and we don't have an idea for an indicator. So yeah, definitely help us out in the comments with that one. Now we've got one thing crossed off the list with the loom towards the front of the car being routed fully. We don't want to get the dashboard into a situation where it ends up being added on having been neglected. So we need to get a little bit more work done on this whilst we've got the momentum. And obviously we've got the framework in, most of the uh, units are kind of attached to it and the top panels are both done for drivers and passengers side. But the front panel hasn't really had a great deal of thought put into it other than I started trying to make use of this aluminium panel, which is actually one of the um, transmission tunnel panels from the original kit car, at least I pr I'm pretty certain it is. And I've marked out all of these dot lines where it needs to be cut in order to be bent around. And I'm not 100% sure it's gonna work, just because on the front of the panel at the top, there is a radius that goes around, which we'll have to put into this section here as it just curves over. And this one is gonna fold around and then have to kind of meet it along that edge. And I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna be able to make that look decent. Even though this panel is gonna get covered over with foam, I'm not sure whether or not it's gonna work. And there's a lot of tabs we need to bend as well so that we can actually rivet it onto the rest of the frame. Now, if that isn't going to work, I have raided the scrap bin and I've picked out enough pieces of thin metal, actually thinner than this, this is just over a mil, I think it's closer to 1.2 mil steel, uh, sorry, 1.2 mil aluminium and all of the steel there is 0.7. So by the time you take the area of this versus the area of those pieces, the weight difference is actually within about 10 to 15 percent which really isn't too bad at all it's about a, a hundred grams or so at, at the top end so i'm hopeful i can make it work out of this because i have no other use for this kind of awkward shaped panel but if i can't get it out of that one i'm just going to start sticking bits of metal onto it and call the problem good <laughs> Thank you.
Well, as you can see, I have welded in three panels onto this, which closes in all of the passenger side of the dashboard. And that's actually almost all of the sheet metal on that done. There's very little else that we need to weld or attach on. There's some small panels we're going to print because they have switch gear and things that need to clip into them. So we'll have a bit of depth to them. So we'll come to the rest of that on the driver's side later on when we finalize all of the switch placements. Now you'll notice I didn't use my aluminium template or my aluminium uh, panel that I uh, marked out because it has this massive chunk out of it and I was pro well, I say massive it's about an inch and a half by an inch but it is exactly on this top corner of this panel and that means it would be visible and I'd have to patch it somehow and I don't have anything to do that and I can't do it and I just thought you know what I'm just going to weld all the parts in and it will be way way simpler and it was and I've also painted it black because the welds look really really terrible I will say one thing though actually about doing the welds, uh, when I was using the grinder to clean them up a little bit because they were all a bit snotty and like sharp in some places, cleaning that up with the grinder, now the dynamat is in, is such a more pleasant experience. I wouldn't, wouldn't do it every day of the week, don't get me wrong, um, but just with this section not echoing the noise out and back through and the same on the other side and the firewall, not everything around that we've managed to get dynamat on, even though it's not finished, such a massive improvement, it's unreal. So even though it wasn't on the 10% list, I'm really glad we eventually got round to getting it done. And even though we only got one thing done on the list, we managed to get the wires routed under the bonnet. It's not a major thing, but it's definitely another thing that's been kind of hanging over my head for quite a while. And I really didn't want to do it because that meant looking at the wiring. And I am so done with looking at the wiring on this car. And there's still a bunch that we have to do. So little steps onwards as we go along. Don't forget to let us know in the comments if you can uh, suggest us something to do for the indicator, whether we try and put something here, something further along the wing, or even try and be really clever and mount something into the uh, wing mirror, which is definitely a, a low priority third option. The location on the side for a little uh, drop-in one like you would get on a normal car is definitely the priority. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you have subscribed to the channel. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter and send us questions, comments. We try to put pictures up about this car, obviously the other cars in the fleet. If we go to um, events or anything like that, we'll be putting pictures up there. And if you'd like to support us more directly, you can go to shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy t-shirts like these. Um, we also have hats and hoodies and all sorts of things for whatever the weather. And if you want to support us really directly, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Pedalbox show where you can support us from as little as a dollar a month. Thanks very much for watching and we will see you on the next episode.